Well, howdy guys and gals. Backwires and Backroads here, obviously. So it's been a while. I've been super busy and that's what happens when spring starts and you have to get a year's worth of living in a six months and a year's worth of work in in six months and work and play and it's crazy, but it's a good kind of crazy. So anyway, Nosy Beagle Boat Review 2004. Hughescraft, Sea Runner, 22, Hardtop, Alaskan Bulkhead. How about if I turn the phone around and I'll show you what I got. Okay guys, so for those that don't know, Hughescraft, they're made in Colville, Washington, Washington State. Welded aluminum boats, very popular. I think the most, the best selling brand in Alaska, which tells you something. They make a lot of them and they do a good job, but they're, you know, somewhat quote unquote mass produced welded aluminum boats, you know. Uh, this is a, like I said in the intro, 2004, and it's a Sea Runner model, and it's a 22 footer. They actually don't make this model anymore. They make a 19 and I believe a 21, but they uh, did away with the 22 footers for some reason. Seems like they're going backwards, but you know that's just me. This uh, obviously hard top Alaskan bulkhead, which means you know just for those that don't know, it's got the it's got the hard back with the door, the locking door, you know, so you can keep the heat in and keep the weather out. And, you know, some of them have fish curtains. This one, one of the many things that makes this one special, see that monster right there? That is a Honda 225 horse V6. And it gets this boat flying. I took it out a couple days ago. You'll see some footage here in a, in a bit. Um, and it's, this is, this boat is a screamer. You could almost say it's overpowered. But, you know, some people say there's no such thing. But this is absolutely the most horsepower you'd ever want on the back of this boat. I'm pretty certain. It, uh, it'll do, I confirmed this when I was out there. It'll do 30, 32 miles an hour at 3,000 RPMs, keeping it up on step, which is, if you know your numbers, that's amazing. I haven't tested what the top speed is, but I'm guessing it's around 50, maybe more which doesn't sound like much when you're in a car, but when you're on the water, that is flying. It's also very economical. It's uh, my buddy that I got it from, just in a nutshell, he just turned 80 this month, and he's decided this is too much boat for him. And to tell you the truth, it's probably too much boat for me. And uh, it only has 106 hours on the, on the motor. He's had it since new, and he hardly ever used it, just out in the Shinabaguan Bay, fishing for lake trout and coho when he can, brown trout. Uh, German Browns and uh, yeah 100 hours is officially what most people agree is kind of broke in on an outboard especially a four-stroke in this you know 106 hours so like new and of course the welded aluminum and fresh water other than probably just need, needing a little bit of cleaning up is basically like new so this is like a time capsule it's a 18 year old boat that has had almost no use uh, pretty amazing Oh, what else can I show you? So that roof rack up on the top. I put that on. Um, I like to put roof racks on. I just had it laying around. I always pick up roof racks cheap off of Facebook and Craigslist. Uh, and I almost every boat I ever have, I, I put it on to put the kayaks on and driftwood and stuff like that. You've seen it on my other boats. Um, and I don't know if it's going to stay up there. Ron already had some some crossbars going across the top there, so I just I just put it up there. I just, with rope, you know, not not permanently, but I kind of want to see what it looked like, see if it fit, you know, so I put that on yesterday. It's uh, also got this yeah, uh, Honda, Honda 8-horse kicker, uh, extra long shaft, and it's a tiller, and it's manual tilt, but it's electric start and pull start. And uh, the way, I'm just it's kind of talking for folks that don't aren't boaters, you know, so a lot of the stuff, you know, my boater, Viewers will already know, but just, you know, bear with me. It's the Amish classroom, you know. In the back, the people in the back, this is what a boat looks like, you know, <laughs> on and on. It's got a little, when you when you run on the, the kicker, you know, for trolling for, for fish, you just, you put a little bar that goes from the main steering over to the kicker. So you can steer with the steering wheel up, up front, so in the cabin. It's on easy loader, tandem axle trailer. Kind of sounds like I'm a salesman, huh? Like, oh, I buy this boat. I'm, the, I'm just... That's not me. I'm just kind of going over what I'm thinking of here. I'm going to crawl up inside here in a minute. Just giving you all some angles. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to crawl up inside and I'll show you. So like a lot of these 
trailerable boats, you know, there's not much to show you inside. They're limited to an 8.6 beam. Um, this one's got the bench seats on either side, and those fold out to a bed. You put some bars across the middle, you know, and then it turns into a bed going side to side. And I'm going to close the door here. Got some storage. And got a couple of batteries on a Perco switch and a little cassette toilet. They always come with that. Whether they get used or not, it's a different story. Got the helm seat, of course. Got the co-pilot seat. Controls. Garmin touchscreen. Ron just put that on a couple years ago. It's hardly even used it. And then a, kind of a lower end depth sounder, which gets the job done. And compass. They call this a pass-through windshield. Open this up, and you can step out. Kind of consider it an open bow or a bow rider. There's a bass seat that plugs in right there. So if you ever, you know, want to just do casting type fishing, you can just sit in that seat on the front and cast. That's a fish hold with a pump. Switch on the dash, you can fill that up, and it's a live well, I guess would be the better term for it. And anchor locker. Different view of the cabin. And my roof rack. My friend Barry picked that up for me when he was down in Iowa. It came up for sale, and he went and grabbed it. Thanks, Barry. Got some storage under the floor here. Put whatever you want. I did a little cleaning in this this morning. Just did some scrubbing and fish holders. Fishing pole holders, I should say. And the back deck. Enough for two people to comfortably fish off of. Scotty Downriggers, not my favorite, but you know, they get the job done. I like Canon Unitrol myself. And then the beast. What a beast. This boat could actually get by with probably 150 horsepower in the back, no problem. So you got an extra 75 horses back there pushing this thing. Extend uh, a conventional transom. So for those that don't know, a lot of welded boats come with that have outboards come with uh, what they call offshore brackets or an extended transom. You know, take your pick on the name, and I'll show you a picture here of the difference for those that don't know. But this one's just a conventional transom with a transom bay. And yeah, guys, that's about all I can show you. Maybe I'll crawl up here if I don't. And hold the phone and not fall off the side. Give you a little view. My buddy he called this boat Merlin. He's kind of a wizard. He can fix anything like a lot of those old timers. So it's really fitting. Awesome rope job. Did that to the Vagabond too. Just so anyone's wondering, the Vagabond did find a home. A couple of sisters came out from uh, New Hampshire and uh, picked it up. They just did this bonsai trip in like 24 hours and and bought it. One of the sisters did. The other one just came along for the ride. Cute too. Cute middle-aged sisters from New England. Holy buckets. I think I might have to go visit them. They've invited me. I might go. But that's a different video. Okay guys. I think that's all I can show you. 2004 Hughes Craft Sea Runner 22 Hardtop Alaskan Bulkhead Honda 225 Horse Main 8 Horse Kicker. That's it. Thanks for watching.